Hey, John. Third grader. I know you and um uh, Joey Sink. and Jerome, y'all been talking. Give me a couple of pointers in here. Um, first start with you, Joy. Give me a pointer. What you what you thought? Well, if this was my house, I would have got rid of this wall. Let me tell you why. Let's uh, cycle back here, Greg. We're gonna open the door. Let's go outside, Greg. Back out of the door. So I let you go walk in this door, right? First impressions mean a lot. So when you walk in a house, the thing that I'm always really uh, that I really like is as soon as you open the door, your first thought in your mind that someone goes like, Oh my god, this is a really nice house. Right now, when you walk in this house, you stand right there. This wall right here, well, Greg's gonna do a really, really, really nice kitchen. So this wall is preventing you from seeing a really, really, really nice kitchen. If you would have just got rid of this wall and brought it right here, this is actually a really nice duplex. And the reason why is because you've got one, two, three windows here. Most guys limit the number of windows just simply for cost. You got a lot of natural light in here. And so like this right here is preventing you from going, you know, this, this two and a half feet is preventing your first impression from walking in here going, holy crap, this is a really, really nice place because you're gonna have a really, really nice kitchen. So Greg, you know, what Greg said was, hey, well, I'm gonna put the fridge right here. Well, even if you did put the fridge there, that'd be stupid to do that, for, in my opinion, because you're blocking the flow. You're already gutting the house, you're already running all new plumbing. You might as well make it as nice as you possibly can, because it's not a huge space by any means, especially since it's not very big, it's more of an importance to actually maximize the flow and the feel of the place. You guys have heard of Funk Sway or whatever, that's kind of like one of those concepts. So that's what I would've did here. I would've got rid of this wall. I would've did my fridge over in the corner. I would have my fridge, I would have went cabinet, I would have went sink, uh, cabinets in the corner, I would have put a Lazy Susan. I probably did my stove right here with a really, really, really nice uh, high-end, maybe like range hood or and maybe like a pull-out microwave. And in here, because this is a small place, you know, you could have did, you know, a small little peninsula where maybe you put like, you know, two or three stools right here for kids eating breakfast. So even though it's a small place, you can really, really maximize the flow and I always think about, hey, how are people are actually gonna live in this house? You know, how is this house gonna be used? You know, if this is a place, two bedrooms, let's say there's a, a two, you know, mother and dad and, and two kids, you know, well, you're gonna have two kids here. So it's not a ton of space, but you can make this place really, really, you know, functional. And that's just a really, really small change with kitchen layout. It's not just, oh, we make the kitchen look good. It's so, hey, let's make the kitchen look really, really good. Let's also make it really, really livable and, you know, maximize the, the space that we do have. But okay, again, let's yeah. switch gears real quick. Shoot. My homeboy, um, Jerome, right here, I told him, I said, look, man, I'm putting in laminate plank flooring that's waterproof. It's called vinyl laminate plank flooring. He told me, no, I need to go with what? Look at these floors, y'all. We just took out some old raggedy tile. He said, no, nah, you don't need to go with that, Greg. What you say, uh, Jerome? You should go with tile. Because if you go with the laminate plank floors, well, you may get a dog or a cat or anything. Somebody could be moving a refrigerator or something. So what you scratch it up or something. Yeah. Tile, you pretty much you ain't really got to go through all this. It's just actually going to just I'm waiting to easy to clean, clean, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's less and go with dark grout. Yeah, dark grout. Dark grout. Always with dark grout with anything you do. All right. And sell or rent them out. So this is the one we're doing, Greg, is the first one I'm doing for someone else, really. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Just build. I do mortgages as well. That's kind of my background and everything. So that's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, Greg's talking to Holly about you, so I have to get with you when I start the next. Oh, he's super detail, yeah, yeah, yeah. super detail. Um, John, you was—I was thinking about going with a 24-inch cabinet, but you said no, Greg. You got enough room. You need to go with a what? Uh, 36 or a 48. All right. So it depends on since you have a large bathroom. Mm -hmm. If you would have measured, check it out. You if you would have measured it out, you could have probably gained more space out here in the living room. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that's all it is to it. Okay. All right. I see you working, John. All right, man. Hey, I like that, y'all. What do you think about these ceilings? You think we should get rid of these ceilings or what, ladies? These are uh, super. If you're gonna build a house and someone's gonna put some ceiling like this, they would probably charge you ten yeah, times more than cost a drywall. To find ceilings like this, I mean, if you cover this up with drywall, it'd be uh, an absolute shame. It's like uh, it's like buying a G wagon and painting it hot pink. Waste of talent. That's better than I'll stain them. You'll stain them? I'd whitewash it. Okay. Yeah, make it look bigger. Yeah, it yeah. makes it look bigger. That's why they said do that. It would do both. It kind of still keep some of the texture, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't be like straight like paint where it covers up all the. Uh, What's the difference between whitewash and paint? Whitewash is based like a thin down white paint essentially. So it still feels white. So it kind of still gives you all the benefits of, of the color and feeling higher. But like, so what Drum's saying is 
he loves to look at wood. Wood's beautiful. You know, naturally it's beautiful on its own. So he yeah. doesn't want to cover that up, right? No, I yeah. That. So I it would kind of do both. It kind of give you the benefit of both. Where I agree with Jerome, where natural wood, especially if it's stained, is gorgeous. So he doesn't want to ruin that. And you can still do that. You know, in a space like this, you just have to be really, really careful with you know your how you maybe the color of your baseboards or color of your floor. Because you can still make it look pretty open, even though the ceiling's a little bit darker. But you can sand it down. Let's we'll see, we'll see what a room probably like this. I would ask to do the tile, and then for the baseboard, yeah. I would ask to make the tile the baseboard. Yeah. John, going in. Most people don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to go back to the internet. Yeah, this, this is perfect. This yeah, is all perfect. perfect. You know? my time is perfect. Yeah, I ain't doing that. Because, like, man, you'd be like, say, you do the vinyl when you come here. Greg, what's the, purp what's the purpose of the purple primer? All right, y'all, listen up to this. Greg finna get this right. The purpose of the purple primer is to seal the glue. Seal the deal. No. Well, it helps the glue to... Grab onto the slick finish of the the edges where you glue your fittings. Oh, so it kind of give it like a rough edge. It, no, as a matter of fact, it goes the other way around. It softens this right here where you're gonna adhere the glue. Okay, I'm learning, y'all. Plus, it helps when you uh, get it inspected. That's one of the things that the uh, they look for. inspectors look for. Oh, did you know that, Joey? I did not know that. I know you did. I'm teaching you no, something, I, I Joey. I know about the glue. I know about the glue. But I did not know about uh, the inspectors looking for it. I've seen them get out of their truck, yeah. glance, and go, see y'all. Yeah. And that amount of space, they'll have, the they'll have floor to ceiling drawers, maybe like, so you have 12 drawers and you have the rest of it would actually be like top and bottom closet space. So they get way more, way more use out of it. Like space. the same amount of space, you know what I mean? So it's more money, but it's, and also for like, they think differently. Yeah, they think way different. So everything's kind of really good for a closet to walk in and slide something Yeah, it's still, but out. it's not really them. All right, John, we out of here. Right, call me when you go to hit the Lakeland. Yeah, I might be leaving here just a little bit. Okay. What time is it? What time is it, y'all? 143. All right. Here's let's, say here. let's say you have, let's say right here, you have one, two, three, four, four five doors right here. Here, he has that many drawers, he doesn't have to put a dresser in here, you know what I mean? 
you just have a TV, you put a TV in here, and your closet is the same exact space, but you ain't gonna put no dresser in there. Cause you got you got eight drawers or ten drawers, or put a little step stool in here. You could go four to ceiling drawers, four to ceiling drawers, and just like a you know divider in my like closet rack, you know closet hanger, closet hanger. That's huge. You know what I mean? It's huge like that. Yeah. Hey, let's go get a smoothie, man. Let's do it.